This, ladies and gentlemen, is America. Welcome to little old New York, 1963. Oh yes, this is up to the minute New York, despite appearances, for they've got a craze for rebuilding reminders of the past on any free plot of land within reach of the great tourist trade. You're back with the early cow-catching transcontinental locomotives, just a motor ride away from modern Manhattan. And, if it's hard to believe, just hop on a jet clipper and come here to see for yourself. A hundred thousand visitors pour into this unique city every day of the year by train and plane alone, not counting the commuters who travel in to work. From the great airport, which was once a Long Island swamp called Idlewild, tourists land at the rate of one a second almost all round the clock. You and your luggage are just seven minutes away from the skyscrapers and the big city roar by helicopter bus. So stow those cases away and get ready for the latest and the shortest of Pathy Pick's famous magic carpet rides. Wait for it because it's New York, here I come. We're flying over the site of the great World's Fair that opens next year. And this, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to Wall Street Heliport, downtown Manhattan, just one short street away from the first and far the loveliest of the skyscrapers that ever were built. In the hungry search for office space, they've reached even higher at the center of this jam-packed island, and some, like the 16-round Rockefeller Center, have an awe-inspiring charm and a French cafe that, in winter, becomes an ice rink. New York, but don't kid yourself. It doesn't consist entirely of Irish cops and stylish avenues. The Empire State Building, with 102 stories in Indiana limestone and stainless steel, is no true symbol of New York, though it's an observation post with a view over 50 miles of this staggering scene. City of islands and surprises. That's what New York is. Take that surprising bit of greenery, for example, Central Park. It's a sort of island, an enclave of peace where the geometry of urban streets leaves you astonished that here you can find a placid lake and land where grass and trees can grow. City of Surprises, a toddler's walk away from Schick Fifth Avenue, there's this children's playground in a metropolis where one big building site alone can sell for $10 million. City of Islands and Surprises, here where Greenwich Village insists on shutting out the city roar and rush, making itself an island of sanity. General Grant can sleep in peace because New York streets are boisterous seas lying between surprising islands. The Guggenheim Gallery, where you walk down a spiral ramp, and Washington Square, both have their flavor. And you've heard of this scorched island, Harlem. Chinatown isn't an island, it's a continent. The further you walk, the more Chinese it gets, until it's unbelievable as part of the Western scene. But whatever the language, this is New York. So the chances are you'll be reading how the Yankees have fared in the World Series baseball game. Eighty thousand people pack the Yankee Stadium for their team have been world champions 20 times. And don't, as an Englishman, say the ball game is an elaborate form of rounders. They don't like it. And they take it so seriously, they still wear the Victorian rigard they had when the game began. Some things never change in this city of surprising changes, where every day a skyscraper is scrapped so another can take its place. 
Here, on a billion dollar building site, they're conceiving splendor that will have just a two year lifespan. The 1964 New York World's Fair is taking its breathtaking shape. Under that vast unisphere, gleaming pavilions are being fashioned. Exotic temples and glass fantasies never before imagined. Six-lane motor roads are being widened and vast new bridges built to turn this dream into a magic part of this incredible metropolis of shifting lights. Sea of islands and surprises. Quite literally, New York consists of a whole archipelago of islands, with Manhattan its center, an island itself. Incredibly, an island that in 1624 was bought from the Indians for $24 or its equivalent. Yet today, the United Nations meet on its shore, and 14 million people live on and around it and boatloads circle it with the same thrill they get back at Freedom Land, our old nostalgic starting point.